Roger, this is one of four models of Tosulin machines that Matsura supply in the UK. Where does this particular power turn model start and finish? OK, well, it starts with an 800 table up to 5 metre diameter. Now, with this type of technology, there is, a, there is quite a few machines in the market. I'd be interested to know more about why this is successful for Tosulin and for you and Matsura in the UK. What's it down to? I think it's mainly down to the design and the build quality. Tosulin are looking for performance out of their machines and are also diverse in what the machine can do for them. It's always driven to a customer solution. When you talk about build quality, what, what do you mean? Do you mean the makeup of the construction, everything from the base to the column? What do, what do you identify? I think really when you see the quality of the castings that they use and then the machining that they do in-house, it shows the, the level of quality of the machine and also the way they're put together, you know, the, the hand scraping, the grinding operations and the accuracy is a telling point when you come to use the machine. It's a vertical lathe, obviously, as we can see here. Again, where, where does the, the uh, capabilities from the, the axes function start and finish here? Because this is a straight two-axis machine, I believe. Yeah, this particular model is two-axis. You can then go to a three-axis with a, a, a C-axis. Then you can have driven tools. Apart from that, you can then go to all of the multitude of heads, where you can have angle heads, um, grinding heads, extension heads, and then automatic tool changing into Capto, ISO 50, etc. It's, it's, again, it's down to what the customer requires. How big does this table go, Roger? Five metres. So we go up to five metres. Yep. What sort of weight could you then put on this table to machine? This particular model, you can go up to 30 tonne. 30 tonne. So mm -hmm. if you're putting 30 tonnes on this table, you need a lot of power. Yep. Do, you, do you know what this machine has yep. from a power perspective? Yeah, it starts at 45 kilowatt, going up to 105. 105 kilowatts of power. Right, okay. So you can you can really remove metal. So it doesn't really matter whether you're just machining cast iron or whether you're machining titaniums. It goes across the board. It is really. It, it's built, manufactured to do all types of material. Its main strength is for exotic materials. You can have up to 400 PSI through the tool. So that improves uh, tool life and gives you a better surface finish on exotic materials. So you, 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 you go up to 400 bar on this, don't you, through spindle coolant, 400 yeah. bar. So that improves tool life, gives you better surface finish. Are those the main things? I think so, yeah, because if you're producing, say, an aircraft ring, you know, without the high pressure coolant, you're getting two, maybe three minutes of tool life. Where if you go to 400, you can get in 10 minutes tool life, which is a considerable step up in performance. I find that fairly unusual because normally you're talking about 70 bar, 80 bar, maybe 100 bar, but to, to have four times that is pretty incredible. You mentioned aircraft parts. So would this machine be aimed at the aviation industry, power generation? They're, they're the type of oil and gas. They're the types of things that I'm thinking of. Yeah, it is really. It's, it's all of those products where you've got a high value component where you're doing a multitude of operations in one, so it's one set up to do as much operation as possible. We spoke earlier about the build quality of the machine and the accuracy, because that, that is a key characteristic. When I look at this tool changer, um, there's lots of flexibility with it in the heads that you can change and the tools that you can change, but it doesn't look that fast. Is, is that not important? Not really, no. I think flexibility is what you're after. If you can do as many operations in one setup, you know, time, if it takes a few more minutes to do a few head changes and tool changes, it's irrelevant. It's the performance of the machine that counts. I'd like to know more about this tool changer as well, but what, what sort of tools can you can have, you can have and, and what's the maximum capacity of that, uh, of tools you can have in the carousel? Well, capacity starts at 45 and going up to 96 on a chain. You can then go to a robot loading, which can go to a multitude of 120, 200 tools. You're really looking at um, exchanging capto turning tools from C6, C8, C10 or HSK 63, 100 or BT40, BT50 tools and you can have a, a multitude of those mixed on the machine. We also said earlier about this being a two axis model but you, but you also have a W axis don't you to assist in getting to the right position with the RAM correct? Yeah that, that's to, to reduce the length of overhang of the RAM. If you haven't got a, a moving crossrail, it means that the crossrail is fixed at one position. It means then if you're doing very thin parts or low parts of the table, you've got to have an, the ram extended to its maximum. The idea of having a, a W axis is that you can move down in positions of 100 millimetre to reduce the overhang of the ram. So that enables you to get better tool life, better rigidity, and the ram size is from 240 
up to 320 and then an option of 400 square. Wow, 400 square RAM? Yeah, up to 400. A lot of people will use 240s to access into smaller bores because if you've got a right angle attachment, you need to have a slightly smaller RAM. But if you need it for just performance, then the 400 square is, is quite a beast. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we said earlier about the through spindle coolant power on this machine. You'd need to, be, need to be fully enclosed, which this is, isn't it, if you're running at that? Yeah, you need to have some decent guards on it. You know, you've got high pressure coolant, you've got a part that's rotating up to 400 RPM, so you need to have some substantial guards on the machine. I also like the way here, the, they've made a provision for the slant bed here so that the, the swarf's going to fall away and any coolant's going to fall, fall away. Sometimes you look at vertical turning centres and there's, they don't have that sort of free-flowing angle, do they? Yeah. It's designed to move the chips out of the working area. What you've also got is a powered platform just inside the machine. So when you're machining, the platform raises up out of the way to allow the chips to go straight onto the chip conveyor when you want to get inside the machine for setup or checking you power down the ramp so you can stand inside the machine safely you've got paper uh, filtration on this machine as well don't you to keep keep the flood of the, the cooler yeah it's necessary if you're using up to 400 bar you need to have clean coolant you need it chilled so that it doesn't have any effect on the machine's accuracy